All right, let's begin. The 14-day challenge has rules. You have to paint in grayscale. You cannot paint in non-grayscale. If you ignore this rule, what, what will happen is that you'll be too busy worrying about the colors instead of worrying about the values. In this early stage, 14-day challenge is supposed to introduce you to the world of rendering professionally, thinking professionally, thinking like a 3D modeler would, you know, uh, approaching your, your art in a whole new uh, educated sort of way let's say and so what I want to do is break down the learning process how can I expect you guys to improve if I'm forcing you not only to learn values but to learn color come on like you know that's not fair for you guys and I have to I have to you know fragment the learning process so that it's it's easy to follow it's easy to keep up with and you um, you know can can keep up in a lot of stuff all right I still didn't get the name for the person who's image I did not um, load. This one. Whose is this again? It will be me and then send you. Um, so yes, for now, all of you here who are still um, uh, being, is this yours? 14 day challenge? Jimmy? Is it? No, no, no. I got yours, Jimmy. Yours is the screenshot. I just got yours. Um, Lunader, two-headed ogre. Try my best to get to all of yours. It's a, you know, I've carved up and I'm ready to go. Um, beings, okay, being, being. Are you on my? I'm um, not on my Facebook. Are you on my um, Skype? If you're on my Skype, make sure you message me after class so that I can send it back to you. So okay, so back to this. Um, really important for me to fragment and make it easier for you guys so that you can focus on the important stuff and not worry too much about the stuff that you can focus on later. Okay, so that being said, let us jump into the liquify. Uh, the liquify is sort of my shortcut way of um, placing everything back in its spot, helping you develop better proportions so that I could save time instead of having to re-render and repaint every single feature that you've drawn. So it is to, to, to ex access the, the filter, just go to, I mean liquify, just go to the filter tab at the top and then go to liquify. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm following the standard face measurement for beauty. Um, and I, I try my best to be, teach you guys the beautiful way of drawing a face, sort of like the beautiful face, typical, and then you can change the rules, but of course you first have to learn the rules to break them, which makes a lot of sense really. You can't really go around breaking rules if you don't know what they are. Um, you have to be educated in that sense, and that's what I mean by an educated learning process. You guys are fed the rules, you guys are told, you guys experience the rules, practice the rules, know the rules inside out, and then you choose which ones to break, and that through that you build your style. Um, remember, a style is a habit that you repeat all the time. Um, so once you find a specific comfortable place and you know nudge yourself in, that's when you will find your style. But you, none of you here have a style yet. A style isn't that ex easily accessible. A style only comes after a long period of practice and thought and meditation um, of, in your own artistic journey. You have to make sure you know the rules first, and that's the bottom line. Okay. Rule number one, what's the first rule of 14-day challenge? Grayscale. Grayscale will teach you the value uh, beneath all the colors. Every color has a grayscale in it. You have to learn those grayscales before you learn the hue, the, the color code. All right, so that's rule number one, grayscale, please. Second rule is the beautiful rule. Not the beautiful rule. The rule of beauty, which is make sure that all of your features fit perfectly within the be beauty triangle, which is smaller features going down, larger eyes taking up the, the, the entirety of the, of the face. That's the typical beauty rule. What this triangle, it's not this kind of triangle or this kind of triangle. It is pretty much a right triangle. I don't know how that's, it's just a triangle that'll fit in a nice box. Okay, it's a right triangle. I think that's what they are. They're not actual, right triangle actually is this. Never mind. It's a triangle that'll fit into a perfect box. So to help you determine where to keep your features in, make sure they stay within a typical square border. That will ensure beauty. If you want to masculinate, just introduce a lengthier uh, rectangle shape. These are just typical basic rules to help the beginners um, access good proportions in their work. So this square is very, very necessary. Please stick within this square. What you had before or this triangle, what you had before was a little bit out of the triangle. Do you see everything was a bit elongated, the lips were a bit too large, and the nose was just floating in between two oversized features. When we shrank them down, we had instant beauty because we're following the typical beauty thing. If you guys want to have a little bit more information on how something looks cute or beautiful, I have a video in my video history on YouTube 
about uh, what's beautiful, what's cute. And typically it's, you know, just think cat. A cat has very large eyes, tiny nose, and even smaller mouth. That's the typical thing that I base this off of. And if you guys want to access beauty in your work, that's sort of a shortcut way to get there. The next thing is, so that's number two, rule number two is make sure you follow the beauty rules. They don't have to be beautiful, you don't have to draw beautiful people, but you have to, you have to what? You have to make sure that you're creating a, a, a piece of work that is accessible to all audiences, that is approach, that approaches all your audiences, that all your audience Sis can appreciate. So think about all those popular uh, deviant artists. Think about all those popular artists on, um, you know, the behind movies and stuff like that. How are they so, how are they so successful in their uh, concept art or in their concept for a human being? Let's say for a character. Well, it's their ability to give you a believable, beautiful character. It's not only gives you beauty; it gives you proportions. It gives you believability. Um, sometimes we reshape the eyes, for instance, the way this, these eyes were slanted. It was just non, un, not believable. And also, I'll get to it, but there were no bottom lids. Um, the, 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 the eyebrows were just shaped or drawn or penciled in completely as if they're borders on the eyes instead of protective skeletal um, protrusions in the skeleton. Okay, so now that that's checked up, I'm going to introduce the next rule, which are the dark spots. The dark spots are very, very important. Uh, what are the dark spots? A lot of you know what they are. Some of the new people here don't know what they are. They are the following. These dark spots cannot be, can, nothing can be darker or as dark as them. Um, so they are the darkest points in the face. And once you have these, they're basically the technology that cameras use to do, you know, face, face finder, especially on Facebook. There was this one image, um, it was like a meme or something, and uh, Facebook tried to tag someone's knee because the way the fat was, was dimpled on the, someone's knee looked like a face because it was just two dark spots, two dark spots, and then two dark spots. And that's, that, that's just such a good example of how important it is for you guys to, to, um, to apply all of these typical rules that we see in real life. <clears throat> they really work. And if a camera can see a face in that, a human being will see a face in your drawing, which is not a human being, it's just a couple of lines and shapes, will see a human in your drawing if you have these spots to be the darkest. So I'm sorry for the soft look of the painting. I am using a soft brush to help me sort of go through these faster. But once you have these areas the darkest, you will start noticing. It'll be a lot easier for you to complete the rest of the image. Why will it be easier? Because you have already established how dark you're going to go, so you're not going to go any more darker than that. And so you just, you've established a, 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 um, a value range. And once you've established that value range, it's going to be easier. Okay, then everything is just one level lighter, or two levels lighter, or three levels lighter, depending on the light exposure. So once I have those colors, what I'm going to do now is start sculpting. Remember, we are, we are uh, sculptors who run out of clay and all we have left is our paper and our pencil. How can we create the equivalent of a sculpture through a 2D medium which is the pencil and the paper? That's how you do it. Um, okay, do you guys understand what I mean when I say sculptor? You have to think as if you are getting a chisel and you're just carving away at a block which is the canvas, the empty canvas. You're carving away at it and you're revealing the different sides, but how do you carve? Of course you're not actually going to get a, a chisel and start carving at your monitor. What you do is you think about a light source. The light source is what's going to help you determine how you're sculpting. And so when you have a light source, I mean, have you ever seen a sculptor sculpt in the dark? They're probably not going to do a very good job. There's always has to be a nice studio light and where they're working that helps them determine where this light is coming from. So the light is shining in this way. This is the typical rule. This is the next rule. The light always has to shine downward in the 14-day challenge. This is the most basic um, light source uh, style, basic lighting um, situation that I want you guys to learn and perfect before you jump into other ones. Again, this is about you being able to do something right away, being able to, to see results right away. So this is where you can start seeing results. Perfect one lighting situation after another. Don't try to understand the entire world of lighting. Don't approach every single kind of lighting situation, you know, light from above, light from below. If you haven't mastered it, don't jump into a new one. Master the one you have now. Think about it, create rules for yourself, create your style, break certain rules and see what you can do and then jump into a new one. But as for this 14 day challenge, I want you guys to perfect the upward light shining down on the face. It's not directly from above the face. If this is the face facing this way, 
it's sort of shining down this way. Okay? So it's at an angle. Alright? So now that we know that that's where the light source is coming from. One second, guys. Now that we know where the light source is coming from, let's start chiseling. So again, be careful of your range. You don't want to go too light. You don't want to use this ever in your drawing, ever for the rest of your life. And you don't want to use this. This is too far a jump and it's too contrasted. And you don't really find contrast this much in real life. You find medium tones between each, each, um, each great uh, extreme. The only time you actually find stuff like that is after great filters and cameras and serious exposure and you know all of that editorial stuff. So let's get a nice shaded color, something off the dark spots we've already taken, and start chiseling the lights coming from above. So think about which objects are pushing out, which objects are protruding, and how are they casting shadows. That's how you chisel, by casting shadows and um, by thinking about the form and which form casts the shadow and at which levels of shadow. So depending on the light, which level of shadow. If there is a lot of light, then the dark, the shadows will be darker because the more light you have, the sharper your shadows, the darker they are. Because the object, its, its density is standing directly in front of the light source. Remember what I told you, silhouettes are cast, which they are complete dark, dark figures, are cast in front of the, the, the light directly so we get only the shadow part, similar to an eclipse, of that object and so we get the silhouette. Okay, So what I'm doing is I'm just thinking about the darkest spots on her face and how the light from above her is casting down. The nose sticks out. If you don't know how to draw a nose, Dila, if you're having trouble drawing a nose, I have a video on that. I won't be able to teach you how to draw a nose today because I spent hours and hours on that other video. So you guys, and many other videos about the nose, so you guys should go into the history there and take a look. Um, you'll be able to you know, get a good hold over what the anatomy of the of the nose is all about. So I'm just thinking about which parts protrude. If you don't know which parts stick out, hold your own face. You know, put your hands on your face. Do your eyes bulge out? Yes, they do. Put your hand back onto your cheekbone. That thing bulges out as well. Down into your chin. That thing is like a big bulbous ball under your mouth. Um, your lips also stick out. Your nose sticks out all the way. Your nose catches the most light. So you guys have to make sure um, uh, that you, uh, what's it called, you know, use as many references as you can to help you through the process. So it's not me really memorizing which parts are, are largest. It's just typical uh, referencing helps me understand um, how the face works and which areas are, do I see as the most shadowed. And I say this every stream and I will continue to say it every stream. Learning about makeup will improve your face drawing abilities. Makeup is works from these rules as well. Why does it work from these rules? What's the proof? Well, makeup tries to darken all the areas that we're darkening. Makeup tries to um, exaggerate all the areas we're exaggerating here, which are shadow under the eyes, shadow at the corner of the eyes. Everything where there is already a shadow, makeup intensifies it so the eyes seem bigger, they seem more beautiful and more glamorous. So if you guys experiment with that world of art, that other aspect of art, which is makeup, you'll understand a whole new perspective on drawing faces. Makeup just does the exact same thing. They even use brushes for Pete's sake. So what I'm doing is I'm just thinking makeup. I'm thinking about all the areas that really need all the dark spots. I'm not doing overdoing it. Just thinking about which areas will cast a shadow on their own. And don't depend on eyelashes to paint the image for you. Um, I'm sorry, I don't take calls while I'm working. I don't know who's calling me, Chris. I'm not, I'm not sure if you know that I don't take calls. Maybe that's just someone I just don't know. <clears throat> okay, so shadow and a shadow. Light here, light there. And then I'm going to get the light source now. Sorry I jumped into the eyelids too soon. Now I'm going to get the light source color. And now I'm going to apply the light spots. Just as much as there are dark spots, there are light spots. So what I did with the eyebrows as well, I softened them up. I introduced the shadow of the eyebrow before I introduced the hair. What you did was you introduced the hair before you introduced the shadow, which is a big no-no. Why is it a big no-no? Because it, it comes in layers. 
the, the eyebrow is one big hole, is part of one big hole in the skeletal structure, which is the eye socket. And so that whole area is going to have darkness in it. So what I'm doing now is zooming out and making sure that that area is as dark as it needs to be. Look at any picture of any beautiful woman, you will see that the darkest spot in her face is the, is the eye socket area. Because there's so much going on there, it's a big hole in the skeletal structure. Now I'm going to get the light source color. And the light source color, let's just say it's not going to hit any lighter than this. And this is pretty friggin' light, so you know, you're not going to need any lighter than this. And this is not even in no man's land, it's at the border of no man's land. So you can assume that, you know, you're going to be using only these shades here. So I'm going to take that, I'm going to keep my opacity low. And now I'm going to think about all the, are the highest spots in the face. Not the deepest spots, I'm going to think about the mountain peaks, not the valleys. Right now, before this, we did the valleys, which are the dark spots. Except for the eyes, the eyes are just dark because of the pupil. But now we're thinking about the mountain peaks. This is a bit too bright for the cheekbones. but So I'm thinking about the cheekbones. It doesn't really matter which order you do them in, just as long as you do them. You have to remember that the nose is the highest spot, so the nose will get the most light depending on how it protrudes really. Usually the lightest spot of the nose is the tip because that's the furthest, most outreaching spot. Okay, so I'm just going to place some blobs of color here and then render them. You need the, the mustache, the milk mustache, which is the area right above your lips, like fish lips. And remember the chin sticks out as well, you're going to need to highlight that. And then you have the forehead, which is one massive, massive area of light to reach, which is why women in makeup use a powder to decrease the shine because it catches so much light and all the oil, women want to sort of bring that down, make the, all the focus and highlighter which they get to put on the eyes, all the focus goes to the eyes. It's all about light play and shadow play. Game of shadows. <laughs> That's dumb. <sighs> you guys will hear many, many dumb jokes throughout your experience in this class. So there is an area on the eyebrow that catches the light, which is the height of the uh, brow bone. And I want, I want to show you something. Do you see how she looks kind of old right now? Do you see how she kind of looks old? Like she's in her 30s, you know, late 20s, hitting her 30s. She's got this laugh, laugh dimple here because I put the, 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 the what's it called, the milk mustaches, and I didn't, I didn't connect them with the cheekbone light. The reason why, um, no, not 30 is not old. No, 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 no. <laughs> I swear to God, 30 is not old, but she looks older. Let me show you what I mean. Let me just finish before you guys go off on me. Um, 30 is not old. I'm just saying, you know, I'm, I'm turning 30 in what, how many years? Seven years? So I can't really talk. But, um, but yes, take a look at how this happens. When you connect the light spot of the upper lip to the light spot of the cheekbone, you will get young look. This is because over time our laugh creates a sort of a dent and it becomes another valley that you have to think about. When you draw older people, you have to remember to draw that dent. If you don't draw that dent, you'll just be drawing a young person, an old person who looks remarkably young, maybe because of Botox. So you have to think about um, the, sh the shadows, how the shadows express. Some of you draw it accidentally, an old person accidentally. If you want to draw a young looking person, you have to remember the signifiers. And that is skin that hasn't yet dented, hasn't yet wrinkled. Wrinkles aren't just a bunch of crow's feet and lines. That's not it. It's about a whole system of valleys and shadows and protrusions. All the height spots, even the nostrils on either side, the highest spot of the nostrils catches light. Okay, so let me show you one more time. Oldish, young. Old, young. Remember that. Now for the lips. Some of you like to outline the lips as if you've used a really sharp lip liner pencil and you've sort of made the lips or try to make the lips a little bit larger than they are. You need to blend the skin of the lips with the skin of the face. You can't have it floating there without blending it. Skin makes everything seem like it's blended together. If we remove the skin and we kept just the muscles underneath and we skinned this person's face, you would see, okay, fine, there's edges, that's where this muscle is, that's where this muscle is, there's bends here and bends there. But because there's a transparent layer of skin, which is like basically transparent glass, imagine a really foggy glass and you're putting it on top of a, a scene, but it will seem like everything is blended together. That's what the skin does. It blends the units um, of the image together. If you don't remember that, then what you're going to have is like a cutout look to your drawing, and you don't want that. 
We've got some shadows underneath the lips, just above the chin, cast by the lower lip. I'm going to zoom out. Don't zoom in as much as I have recently zoomed in. I'm just zooming in so you guys can see. You need to zoom out in order to um, to see where you need values, where you're losing values. <clears throat> Okay, and I'm just placing some light on the lower eyelid. Remember, as much as you have an upper eyelid, you have a lower eyelid. If you don't have a lower eyelid, your character is going to look like the lower eyelid was cut out, basically. And now you need the light of the eyes to bring the eyes to life a little bit, because again, eyes that are alive are watery. You know, someone who has dead eyes, or someone who is dead, may God rest their soul, um, they have no more water in their body. Their body is starting to dry up. So well, the first thing that shows when you're dehydrated, what do doctors do? They look at your eyes, and then they measure your, um, I don't know, they look at your pee or whatever. But the eyes are the telltale sign of a dehydration, because they will start to get red or yellow, because there's no water. So if you want to make something look alive, think about the science of it. Oh, well, I just need to make it look more watery. Not so much that it looks teary, because that's what I used to do when I started out. I sort of used that rule too much. But just introduce enough reflection. Again, remember the foggy thing with the skin. Water is just like that foggy glass. If you put it over the eyes, everything will seem blended. So it's just a, a certain degree of blending, plus some light, specific light sharpness, and the eye will look alive in no time. Okay. So the eyes look a lot more alive than before. I'm just going to blend the edges. They don't, they don't really look like they're looking at one specific object. They look like they're just spaced out. The way to make it look like they're looking at one object is to make them a little bit crossed. Because how you focus is by, make, by making your eyes a little bit close so they look, they, they're looking at the same object. Imagine lasers sticking out of your eyes. They both have to land on that object. So that makes it look like they're looking at something. So before, they looked really, really spaced out, like she was just, um, I don't know, like she's just been hypnotized or something. And then after, she looks like she's focusing on something. I actually like the spaced out look because it's so artsy-fartsy. But you can go ahead and do that one as well. But I just want to know, I just wanted, to, I just wanted you guys to know that technique. I'm just going to space them out just a little bit for intrigue. But if they are looking at something, or you're drawing a character who is looking at something, even if from its three-quarter view, they will be a little bit cross or a little bit tilting towards that direction. Not so much that they actually have crossed eyes, but enough that um, they look like they're focusing. It was a long, long process for me to realize that. I had to draw a bajillion eyes before I realized, dude, you need to cross them just a little bit because they look like they're just spaced out. And it always used to be so mesmerizing to me, thinking about how I could make them look like they're looking at something. I thought for a time that only real eyes, real human eyes, can look like they're looking at something. And then I started seeing paintings that actually look like they're looking at something, and I realized, okay, they need to be a little bit crossed. Okay, some fat under her eyebrow, catching the light. She's starting to look like that assassin from Mission Impossible 3. Or four, I forget how many of there. You know that one blonde chick that wants her diamonds? Anyways, this girl has sparse eyebrows, apparently, and I really like that about her. So I'm just going to keep that sparse eyebrow look. But if you want thicker brows, I really like thicker brows as well in, in, in characters. You can just make them darker. Don't try to paint every single eyebrow. It's a process of shading and gradual tones leading to the form and shadow of the eyebrow. And then just a little bit more shadows underneath the socket line to make the eyes look a little bit more real and alive. And this is how your day two should look like. I know it's like a big shot or something new to you and you can't really approach it that perfectly yet, but I recommend you go for it, Zella. Placing some light under there, continuing to blend, thinking about the skin, making sure I don't have harsh edges that are that don't need to be harsh edges. You do need harsh edges, a certain 
Like under the nose, the shadow under the nose needs to be a harsh edge. Only in the areas that touch the nostrils. It can soften out near the tip. Okay, so I need to reestablish my dark spots. Make sure they're the darkest spots in the face. So the nostrils are like big caves in the face. If the face was a landscape, they'd be caves. So if you painted a landscape, wouldn't you paint the cave darker? Um, so you need to paint the nose darker in this lighting situation. Not in all lighting situations, but in this specific one here. <coughs> okay, and this is just how I paint faces. I mean, you don't have to copy me exactly. I recommend you, you, you take the rules at least and apply them to your own style and discover, you know, your tendencies and habits. But remember, just, you don't have a style. I don't have a style. I wish I had a style. But my paintings are really ranged all over the place. I can't really hone down to one specific, specific habit. But, um, but for now, for those who are re just developing and growing, you know, for those little buds of art, you guys need to just think about the, the rules, know the rules, and then over time you will unconsciously learn how to break them to your favor. And then one more dark spot here in the corner of her lips. Remember to blend it, keep it looking realistic. Realistic may not be your goal, you know. Realistic may not be your style, but remember Picasso. He was a master at what he did before he broke all the friggin' rules and became Picasso. He was, you don't have to be a prodigy, I'm not saying you have to know all the friggin' rules, I mean, he was, he had his dad teach him everything, but what you guys need to do is just at least learn how to be realistic. If you don't want to put the time in there, if you feel like, okay, well, I don't need to, I know the rules now, I understand them well enough to break them without practicing them too much, but it's always good to be able to, to have that skill, you know, just have that ability. If you, if you go into commissions, you know, that big evil game of commissions, People are gonna want a realistic rendition. They'll tell you if they if you, if you want if they want a realistic artist, and you'll be able to say yes, I am, and I will be able to provide you with that skill level. Okay, just really roughly throwing in the lashes. You know, you don't need to overstate them. Don't depend on lashes and eye signifiers to finish the eyes for you. That's not what an artist does. An artist understands the relationship between art, between light and shadow, and how to create form through that light and shadow because they are chiseling. They are shaping. Lines are not your friend if you want to be realistic. Lines are nice for sketches. Lines are nice when only you only have a pencil. But remember, you can even with lines produce a realistic look. So right now what I'm doing is I'm sort of shading out as if it was a big circle. You know those practices you used to do in art class, a big circle and or a sphere and they'd make you shade it according to the light source? That's what just, just what the head is. Remember about the shadow and where the shadow sits on that big circle. Reestablishing some of the shine on the face, on the eyebrow. Remember, some of you put the shadow of the eyebrow under the eyebrow without touching the eyebrow hair. The eyebrow hair also gets lighter. Please don't forget that. For those of you who are intermediate in this process, don't forget that, okay? I'm serious. Serious. I was going to say cereal. <laughs> I'm so sorry about those um, who are sending me stuff. And I'm not looking. I'm just looking at the Skype stuff now. I really um, have a lot today to look at. And I'm going to try my best to look at those before I look at the rest. Okay, and now I'm just going to sharpen. So yes, I'm serial. Don't forget those little signifiers of realism. They really help you. And you don't always have to have two dark lines, two dark spots for the lips. But for those intermediates, uh, for those not intermediate, I really want you to focus on that. For those who are intermediate, I know you know how to make a li lip look like a lip without the two dark spots. But remember, it is very helpful in determining the range and the location of the dark spots, or of the lips, through the use of the dark spots. Then you have the Cupid's bow, simple shadow, lined by light. Okay, and then you have the light of the lower lip, because the lower lip is pointing up, catching the light. And the upper lip is dark, avoiding the light. Remember, valleys and hills. 
kind of robot looking. I'm not really here to teach you guys about expressions just yet. I want you to, I want to know you guys can draw a face before I make you draw a face that's smiling or a face that is sad. It is actually very, very easy to apply emotion. Very, very easy. As soon as you learn the rules, you'll be able to understand them. The eyebrows are big, big, you know, members of the expression family. So if you want to have a less of a robot look, point the eyebrows up. Give us more of a lean on the lips, upward tilt, and instead of the eyes being so shaded, don't shade the eyes so much. Eyes that are shaded are more mysterious and less emotional. See? Before. Very robot looking, yes, and after. If you learn the rules, you can apply them. Okay? Hocus pocus. It's not hocus pocus, actually. Scratch that. It is just science. Once you guys get the science, you will be masters at what you want to be. Science is useful like that. <laughs> just a little bit more highlights, thinking about how I would do it in makeup. In makeup, there's actually something called a highlighter. For God's sake, I want to open your minds. There's something called a highlighter that women use and put them on their cheekbones to make their cheekbones look bigger. You know, there's something called bronzer or contour or shadow that they use to put on their cheekbones to make their cheekbones look bigger, to put on their eyes. As if the eyes are so big, they're casting this much shadow, which fools us, the viewers, into thinking they are beautiful. I mean, they're beautiful without their makeup, but thinking they are inhumanly beautiful. I mean, if an eye is so big naturally that it casts so much shadow, the person no longer needs makeup, that's the moment I'll be like, whoa. You know, but until then, it's just makeup. Once you get it, you understand it, you can apply it. Remember these edges, what I told you about the edges, there is a very sharp edge in the nostrils. Nostrils do not gradually become holes and you just have like a little button. It's not like a belly button. It is an actual hole, an actual crevice, an actual thing where you can put your finger. <laughs> so make sure you have that edge there, okay? Okay. It takes a little bit of time to know exactly how to shade the nostril because a nostril can easily look undershaded or overshaded. And there's a part of the nostril that isn't shaded at all, which is like the bulgy part that catches the light. Okay, I'm just going to get my shadows now. Just bring everything back dramatically. Because remember, the closer the object is to you, the darker it is. So there's more contrast in objects in the foreground than objects in the background. So if you want to make her look more faded, as if she's in the background somewhere or very, very far away, make her less important than the person in the foreground, you just have to blur her features to one general um, um, uh, gray tone. I really don't have a style, Michael. Um, I think I have habits, and you know by seeing those habits on my images. But as for style, like I feel like it's it's a very you have to deserve that style. You have to deserve it um, after a long period, and you, that style just sticks with you. And it's not really habits. I have habits, no doubt. I practice them. I use them every day. Typical stuff: how I draw la lashes and how I draw eyelids and stuff. That's a habit. I, there is a specific difference between style and habit. Okay, so those are the rules of the 14-day challenge. You can draw something like this at the end of your 14-day challenge um, um, once you're done this, Zayla. And uh, what I want you to do is remember all the rules that I applied and use them to your favor. Uh, develop your own stroke technique, your own habits, and make sure it doesn't look exactly like this one. I mean, you can if you want. If that's what you're aiming for, go right ahead. But I want you to discover your own method as well. You don't have to use a soft brush. That's just something I do. And this is the before. You had the basics down. You had a nose, mouth, and eyes. But you didn't know the stuff that could enhance the realism. You didn't know the science behind the dark spots. You made the lips dark because you think that lips should be red. And you're like, oh, maybe this red is too dark. It's giving me a dark look. And once we grayed that out, we really saw how, how, um, how, uh, sort of uh, imbalanced the values were. The face was generally too light and everything else was too dark, almost black. And what we did when, when we graded out, we brought everything back to the same level. We're focusing only on the grayscales, forgetting the color for now, and just bringing everything down to a simple realistic tone. 
As for the neck, I didn't do the neck yet. You need a shadow of the head upon the neck. That is an absolute necessary. Unless she is sticking her chin right on her neck, causing a double chin. You need the, ch the neck to be a little bit more formed towards her body. Remember the chin, the jawline determines how big the, 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 the neck you have. <clears throat> have I been saying chin for neck? And if the person has a large, like a boy, has a large jawline, which they usually do after they go through puberty, in their own way, depending on their body type, the, the neck has to respond to that. The neck always emerges from the jawline. That's where the neck emerges from. If it's too thin, you can tell this person is, whoa, you know, it's way too thin. If you look at anorexic people, it's very, very sad. Um, you can see how there's very, very little muscle development, and their jaws seem like they're chiseled, but really they're not. They're just extremely, extremely thin to a point where the neck no longer supports the body that well. You know, this person doesn't have that chiseled a jawline, but... I'm not sure if this is a photoshopped image or uh, God, God knows what it is. God help them. But do you see how chiseled that jawline looks? If she had fat, her jawline would not look that chiseled. But it's because of um, because of the thinness of the neck and the lack of muscular structure, it's become sort of unnoticeable. Or it's just made it com in comparison and in, 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 you know, placing one beside the other. Comparatively, the jaw looks massive. And that's not how it should look naturally through fat distribution of your face. So typical healthy looking person would have a jawline that responds to their neckline or a neckline that responds to their jawline. If you want to make the person have massive jaws, um, uh, then of course you have to expand it even past the normal grade of neck, of the neckline. Okay, you need the ears of course. I don't focus too much on the ears lately. There's somewhere in between the eyes and the nose. Every person is different. If you have a fairy, it's the whole friggin' <laughs> thing. But um, but yeah, and if you want to have someone have a larger jawbone or you want to exaggerate the jawbone, get a secondary light source color and place it on the sides here and here. Or not even just exaggerating their, ch um, making them look big, just making it look like they're extremely contoured. I miss being a makeup artist. I think I'm gonna start getting something out there for my community here. I miss it. I've got all my equipment, I've got all my makeup, all the brushes. And the camera, yeah, I can upload videos. Uh, there's too many of those out there. <coughs> Plus, I enjoy being an art teacher better than a makeup teacher. Teach girls how to be insecure. No thanks. <clears throat> I know not all everyone, you know, teaches people how to be insecure if they're a makeup artist, but it, it comes with the job, trust me. It comes with the job. But altogether, I miss it. I'm just going to darken her temple to do a little bit more sculpting and contouring. And depending on where the, you know, cast shadows from hair and stuff like that, all of that can be applied later when you add props. Props that are like hair, necklaces, clothing, all that is props. I want you to focus on the biology, the face. Portraiture is all about the face. Everything else should be even blurred. The face should be the most detailed part of the face, of the portrait. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to sharpen that. I'm going to send that back to you, Zayla. I hope this helps you. I hope it gives you a perspective on, on what is expected of you in the 14-day challenge, what to remember of rules and stuff in the 14-day challenge, thinking about uh, sculpting and thinking about that you can only sculpt if you have a light source. You have to make sure your light source is a good enough light source that it can, we can see the object, but it's not so much exposure that we literally see nothing of the object. It's like using the um, contrast. You know, that's way too much contrast, way too much contrast. Let me even show you more. Some people like like to do this. High, high contrast, high brightness. And this is nice, you know, there's an audience for this, but if you're doing a commission, not all your commissions can have this. And if you're all the way up here, you know, and if you're somewhere here, this is still bad. 
This is really bad. You have to make sure you're you're somewhere in a nice, beautiful, medium tone where if you were to apply color, this is even too dark, you know, for my taste. It's a bit too dark. I'll just line it up like that. So when you apply skin tones, the skin doesn't look muddy. This is why skin looks muddy. Guys, if you want to know why my skin looks muddy, your values are too low. You're too dark and there's too much... Um, you're going too dark with the skin values and there's way too much exposure, way too much contrast. Okay? So I'm going to save that and send it back to you. I hope that helped. And on to the next one. This is Amers. Um, it's very, very beautiful. Very, very beautiful work. Massive improvement. This is the person. This is like sort of my poster child lately. Um, um, and this is her day six. I, I assume she hasn't finished it. Amers' 14-day uh, challenge is a very slow process. But that's the point of the 14-day challenge. You learn about yourself as an artist. Ask Amer. You know, talk to her. Uh, I do have a, a, an interview with her on the post on the DeviantArt post in the, in the page, but um, but you guys can ask her, what was your experience like? What was the scariest part? What, when, what did you learn? And she will tell you about all the stuff she's learned and, um, and stuff like that. Uh, you want to take time to observe yourself so you can recognize your mistakes, recognize uh, your habits as an artist, okay? So now let's jump on to the... So what I did so far was I just... You had the very geometric biology. Do you see those sharp little edges you had at the top of the head? And the neck was a touch too long. I just wanted to give it a bit of a, of a compression. Just to remind you to make sure everything is in the same level. Amar, I need to ask you um, just one thing. Are you intending on having her look like she is sort of worried or squinting or looking in the distance? <laughs> Do you um do do you notice do you know what I'm do you know what I'm talking about? Yes, I want to try trying this time not to make the head too small. Yes, you're you're intending on that. Okay, good. Because if you weren't intending on that, then it looks like they're squinting, and then you have to sort of push their eyebrows back and all of that. But because you are intending with that, I'm going to go on with it. So I think I'm pretty much done with look fly actually. What I'm go what I'm going to now. Uh, going into now is this is something else you'll notice about the 14 day challenge at first all the faces will look the same then eventually you will start noticing how to make the face look like a real face real face meaning not all faces are perfectly beautiful do you understand what I mean when I said you know make sure you know how to draw a beautiful face before make sure you know the rules before you break them so make sure you know how to draw a beautiful face or like a perfectly non-humanly beautiful face um, before you jump in and make something look human and real and flawed and you know the nose is a bit too big or the nostrils are a bit too flared and stuff like that okay so what I need to do right now Amara is just show you how some of these bulges that you have are taking away from the expression or the anatomy you have a bit of a bulge on either eyebrow and it's sort of you trying to fix the temple trying to get the temple involved but the temple is sort of it's part of the eyebrows, Amr. So any shading you have on the eyebrows will instantly be applied to the temple. So the temple is like a sort of flat place, a flat plane on either side. Remember how the face is four quarters. You have the first three quarters and three quarter view and you have the last quarter invisible. You don't see the other ear. So in this case we're seeing all four quarters, but we still have to make it act like it's a four dimensional, ob three dimensional object with four sides. Um, or three sides in this case. You have the front side which is flat and then you have these two sides here and then you have that back side. It's not really a square anymore after you chisel it and sculpt it but these two sides here and here which are part of the temple catch light so you need to get some of the light out here and throw it on here. That's how you get a temple. You don't get it by shaping the eyebrow in a different way so that it looks like it's part of the temple. What you do is you simply shade this whole area dark as if you were to shade a sphere. What I mean by sphere is, is just, you know, this practice that you all did, you know, early on in this class. You know, just drawing a simple circle. So that's simply how you do it first. You have to do the base shadows first before you jump into the secondary light sources. So simply just just like I did with the one before this, I added the shadow and then I get the light and add the light. That's how you get a temple to look convincing in this kind of lighting situation. Okay? 
You need to have that temple. You need to have that edge in the square of the head, Amr. To make the head look convincing, to look like it has edges, that the forehead isn't perfectly cir circular. Avoid the perfectly circular forehead. It's just way too intense. I'm also going to lighten up her eyes a little bit. They're a touch too dark. They can be that dark with the assistance of makeup, but I don't want you to depend on that dark look. I want that glassy, watery look on the eyes so that you put the shadows only where they need to be. For instance, all that dark you had in there, what I'm going to do is just throw that shadow back down underneath the eyelid. Listen, Amr, the eyelid, to me, is more important than the lashes. The lashes and the accessories and the liner is less important than the actual biology. I mean, you can't just have lashes and makeup and floating in thin air. You have to have the object first. So it is more important to me to shade the object to make it look realistic than to shade the, the, the makeup and make, make use the makeup to finish the image for me. I mean, you're the artist. You don't need the makeup anymore. You can just draw the naked face. So you had a lot of shadows before, loads of shadows on the eyes, which is a bit too much. It made it look a bit like alien-like, a bit too full. So what I'm doing is easing up on those, even if her eyes are darker, just so for the sake of the exercise. And I'm throwing that shadow that you lacked before to make the eyelids look more realistic, to make the, you know, everything else look more realistic. Don't depend on eyelashes to finish the image for you. And the darkest spot should always, always be the dark spots then nothing should be as dark as them. Big mistake if you're doing that. Remember, just because you guys are jumping into the rules, you can, there's certain rules you cannot break. There's certain rules that cannot be broken. And once you break them, you're going to jump into that uncanny valley or something that looks too realistic, but it just doesn't have the signifiers of realism. Remember to stick to your roots, to remember the basics and not overdo it. Because listen, when you're going to jump into color, Oh my gosh, you're going to get it. You're going to get it if you're going too dark. You're going to just you're going to say I hate this. I'm going to stick to grayscale. And no one can go far with grayscale. You know, not not too far anyway. You have to remember to keep your values as light as possible while still containing form. But not too light, you know. Be careful. It's, it's a dangerous game, let me tell you. <laughs> you lose a lot if you give a lot. So now I'm just trying to get the cheekbones in there. And how I do it is simply just dragging the shading from the third and fourth quarters, or f first and fourth quarter, however you want to look at it, really, to make a cheekbone line. And then I need that milk mustache. Again, your, your basics, Amr. Don't forget the basics. You need that milk mustache under, above the lips to make the lips look like they are actually sticking out and catching some light. And by the way her lips look, she's going to have some light on either side of her lip, her bottom lip. Make the lips look like they are part of the skin. Shade them in. And now I'm just going to get the dodge tool and just li highlight all the areas. It's a bit too light. But we'll see. <coughs> and then again, eyebrow light makes the eyebrow light as well. Okay, nose tip should be one of the lightest spots, if not the lightest. That's a bit too light. Be careful with the dodge tool, it's crazy, it's like fire. If you play with it, you know, without controlling, you're going to get hurt. <laughs> Just going to sharpen that up. See, now the nose looks like it's just protruding outward, there's a tip. You know, there's a peak in the nose anatomy. And people like Anna who are, who are improve, uh, Amr, sorry, who are a bit further along the 14-day the, the challenge process, um, I tend to be a little bit harsher on them. I tend to forgive them less for the mistakes they make. So if this was to be, to be, to be graded, Anna, I would grade it at a, f a 70. Because you had the basics, but those, but but, but the difference between an 8 and a 9, and a 9 and a 10, and an 8 and a 10, is the tiny, tiny, almost microscopic little changes 
you will you will come upon it the day will come upon you when you look at a professional artist's drawing and you'll say what is the difference between theirs and mine I'm so frustrated what is the difference between their work and my work and that moment you will you will realize it is those tiny little choices that they make okay that is going to be the difference between intermediate and experienced and professional and advanced okay and I remember that and the darkest spot here seems to be the nostrils so it's suggesting that her nostrils are really big and if you don't want nostrils to seem like they're really big or they're taking a lot of space on the face just decrease the shadow a little bit if if you can afford it remember don't sacrifice a dark shadow or a dark spot never sacrifice a dark spot so right now I'm placing shadows on either side of her lip corner these are the tiny choices I'm talking about Anna these tiny little microscopic changes in value that make this image look realistic versus how it looked before which I'll show you a little bit of shadow under the cheek here a little bit of shadow and it is still the same face but now it's ha it has these enhancements realistic enhancements okay the nose okay it looks good yeah so yes I will be strict with you your critique will be different you know critiques for an intermediate student will be a little bit different than those who are just starting out or on their first or you know haven't painted a face before or have no experience painting a face there's the basics and then there's there's you know stuff that you know if, you, if you're an intermediate and you keep drawing the same face you will be disappointed with yourself in no time you'll say my god I'm missing something I don't know what it is but I'm missing it and I want it to stop and it'll be that final little push or many pushes actually the highest points get microscopic little dots of light that are lighter than everything around it these are this is the shininess of the skin skin is very very shiny very reflective gets oily fast remember these typical rules skin gets really really oily and this, this is kind of stuff you learn on the field you know when you're out there and you're looking and getting references getting real people drawing real people looking at real people's photographs you'll notice that there's areas in the skin that are that are um, that are really really oily versus areas that aren't oily for instance the eyelids are very oily making it very reflective the nose is extremely oily the t-zone which is here Again, the thing with makeup, women get powder to make that area less oily. Here, this whole area here is oily. So these are the areas you would get highlights. Okay? And so one last little highlight on the eye to show a little bit of light. And remember the shadow of the upper eyelid on the lower eyelid. I know you had a shadow there, but I was sort of mistaking it for eye eyeliner. It's a shadow. It's there whether the person is albino or not. There's a shadow there. Okay, a little bit of thickness in the eyelash line. Sometimes you will draw lashes without drawing lashes. That's because you're introducing the shadow of the lashes. The cluster of the lashes creates the shadow. You can replace all those tiny little strokes with a shadow, and that's the difference between a, a painterly um, speed paint versus something that's rendered. Simply replacing one large system of shadow and form with just a simple stroke. That's the difference sort of between an advanced and an intermediate. The fact that they can sacrifice certain shadows for other shadows to be most effective to use the less amount of time. Okay, and I'm really just trying to push the realism as far as it can go. The shadow of the neck needs to be a little bit sharper. And you will see the before and after now, Ammer, and it'll give you a good comparison. Remember that thing I told you about the eyebrows? Don't try to paint the, the don't try to paint one feature by painting another feature. Paint them all at the same time. Chisel them all together. They're all connected at the end of the day. So I'm gonna save that. So before you had the basics, it was beautiful, it was well done. This will get you paid, this will get you commissioned, this will get you hired. But this and this, there's a tiny little difference. And you don't have to make her face like this. Her face can stay like this. There are people who have faces like this. I'm not saying that you guys have to do make my choices. But I'm actually telling you, um, remember that you're not accidentally drawing a face like this. That's what I'm worried about. 
Um, you don't accidentally be a good artist. Intentionally be a good artist. Know where you are making these choices. Realize that you're making these choices, okay? Yeah, uh, the, the best measurement for me, and uh, it's been told to me many times, is can you draw the face again? That's the best, best challenge you can give yourself. Better than the 14-day challenge. Can you draw this face again? Can you do this? Can you duplicate this? Because if you memorize and you understand the system and you understand the process, you will be able to redo it all over again and you will just have to rip it up and draw it again, rip it up and draw it again. That's what the 14-day challenge is doing anyways, you know? You're ripping up your old drawing and you're starting it again. But I don't want you to have an accidental um, face. Okay? So you're saying ears are a problem for you. Um, ears come in, you know, sometimes they're tucked in the head. The way you're drawing them here is perfectly fine. They don't need to be rendered completely. But ears tend to be tucked in the head. They tend to be tucked as a, a part of the head. Once you do this, I feel like they're going to be sort of more accepted by you, <laughs> but um, when you have ears that stick out, they they sort of you can tell they have an outward movement. They're no longer tucked in, and they stick out horizontally, not vertically, not elf ears. They stick out horizontally, and if there's a large, I don't know what it's called, that little bulb of fat here, it will show. It will protrude outwardly. Okay. I'm just going to tuck her ears back in. Just remember, if you want ears that aren't that obvious, tuck them back in. Have their simple anatomy there. Ears will not show the crevice at this angle. If you're doing a side view angle or a three-quarter view angle, that's when you will see the ear hole. Because there's a tiny little thing that nature or God put there that you can tuck on top of your ear hole so that you don't hear anything, which is a tiny little white spot here and here. Your hole, the ear hole, is not going to be visible at this angle unless you have massive ears <laughs> and the ear hole is it's like it's non-existent there's a place there that people like to pierce which is really freaky <clears throat> okay it's the first time I think the original was prettier although it does has some extra details yeah everyone has their taste in, in what they're doing I'm just trying to make sure that people don't accidentally draw what they're drawing and intentionally draw and know the difference and know how to create fat and how to create um, levels of fat. You see how now we have sort of more geometry, more contours. If you follow these lines and draw them all around, sort of this is the difference that I'm talking about between advanced and intermediate. Intermediate is perfectly acceptable. There's nothing wrong with intermediate, but if you want that stage higher, this is how sort of you approach it. Remember all the contours. How many, how much more information can you include? That's basically it. This looks fine. As I said, it is amazing, but there's always space for improvement. That's the number one rule. If, if there is a point where you start saying, I don't need to improve anymore, that's when you're going to stop learning. And then everyone else will start advancing around you and you're going to realize, crap, you know, I haven't advanced at all. It's because you've been saying, I don't need to improve anymore, or I've reached what I want to reach, or I've reached my goal. We are always going to be 90% pro. All those great artists you know about are 90% pro. They're not 100%. No one can be 100%. They will be 100% the day their drawing steps out of the drawing and starts acting as a, as a human being would. The day they will, you know, create, they will have that, what's that one myth? When the drawing was so good and the guy was in love with, I keep forgetting the name. I remember it when I'm not, Dorian Gray. no, not Dorian Gray, um, no, stuff, <laughs> Spongebob, um, but, but yes, that's what I'm talking about. The day your drawing jumps out and starts talking to you, that will be the day you guys are 100% pro as if you are God himself. Stuff on <laughs> okay, I think someone is sending me something. Um, okay, so if you know what I mean now, take what you can, again, take what you can and apply what, uh, what you've understood and accepted. Um, then we have this one by Julia. Um, this is very anime-driven. Um, 
And some of you here, uh, depending on who you follow and who you surround yourself with and the kinds of artists that you pursue to be like, your drawings will start to look further and further from maybe what you want. Maybe it'll start to contain a certain style. And I don't want you guys, again, to accidentally become what you are. I want you to know what you're doing. I don't want you to guess your way through your art career. And at right now, currently, this looks actually like one of my old drawings. Let me find it. <laughs> I was obsessed with big eyes and makeup back then, like seriously obsessed. Let me see if I, if I think I deleted it the other day. Here, drawing, drawing. Come on. And again, it works, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. But it's back when I was obsessed with big eyes. It looks very, very similar. And yes, I have talked about it, the cute look, the cat eye look. It's nice, but take it from me, you guys. I pushed far and I and 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 I and I got there and there's no audience for it. There is a very small audience for that style. There is this very small audience for the realistic gone for the anime gone realistic. Take it from me, you guys. One big part of learning process is learning from other people's experiences and other people's mistakes. Looking at the pros, not asking them, what is your technique? Ask them, what mistakes did you make? You know, when you talk to Craig Mullins, if you ever guys ever talk to him, he's a freaking awesome man. Um, ask him, what is the mistake? What is the first mistake you made? And how did you overcome that mistake? And once you start, then I'm telling you what my mistake is right now. And that's the uh, the, the realistic are the anime gone realistic? Very, 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 very small margin of people for that. Very, very small. And now I'm talking about consumerism. I'm, I'm saying there's a big audience for that. Just look at Tsukimi chan. But, um, but it's a very small employment margin. Very small employment margin. Unless you're in Korea and you're getting hired for concept art for the next game. Very, very small margin for that. <coughs> And if and if they've t if, if they tell you they've made serious uh, zero mistakes, if these pro pros have tell you they've made no mistakes and everything was just one progressive good choice after another, they're lying and get away from them. Find someone who is honest. Find someone who will tell you where you where they um where they have made the mistake. Okay, very very big big piece of information right there. All right, so what? How do I react to this? Well, what I'm gonna do is shrink her eyes. Beware the large eyes. There is nice largeness. I, like I said in the last critique, there is a way to have large eyes without making them look realistic. Large eyes exist in real life. The largest of the pupil, the largest of the socket, the defineness of the socket, the, the depth of the eyebrows, <coughs> sorry, the depth of the, of the eye socket and the visibility of the upper and lower eyelid, all of those things are signifiers of a large eye. However, it is not the actual skeletal biological DNA largeness. It is not going to be not what I mean, what I say is like it's not going to be a completely new creature, a completely new species like alien species or something like that, which is basically what we're drawing when we draw anime. Remember to keep your features all similar in structure. Don't cripple yourself with the style or the road you're on now. Make sure you've given yourself enough space to create something realistic, something unique. Everyone has this style, you guys. Everyone does the anime gone realistic. Everybody. And there is a large audience for it, of course, but that audience isn't necessarily the most professional audience in the art industry. I hate saying the word industry, but they aren't necessarily, you know, movie developers or game developers or... And that's what's popular today. Realistic, believable. And once you've, again, once you've learned the rules, break them by all means. Lately I have been doing a lot of sketching, a lot of character cartooning sketches. And I realize I'm so thankful that I skipped, stepped so far away from it. Because now that I go back, after learning all the rules, I know which rules to break. And it has made the sketching process so much easier. It's made duplicating other styles so much easier. Okay. I'm just trying to push. Oh, it still looks beautiful, doesn't it? You know, everyone can agree that it still looks beautiful. It still looks like this girl. But now it is less 
overstated. Now there's a larger audience for it. Now people are like, wow, this is gorgeous. You know, add a flower, add some symbolic whatever, and you've got you got a painting and you you got a more powerful gallery. What I'm doing right now is just sculpting. Again, you cannot sculpt if you don't have a light on your room, in your room. So you cannot sculpt if you don't have a light source. <coughs> nostrils need some light same same rules you'll notice this class gets very very repetitive same rules same concept same process just different artists and that's what makes it awesome of course there is no originality but there is originality in us and we can make it unique and you your the uniqueness of your art depends on you which rules you decide to keep which habits you decide to inherit and your road toward your style don't Depend. See what you're doing here? You're depending on the makeup to do the drawing for you. Do not make that mistake. Please. Depend on these, the, the principles. Depend on the process. Depend on the science. The science will get you a realistic looking drawing in no time. And again, break the rules if you want to break them. Just learn them first. That's the condition. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to introduce the all famous dark spots and get them, give them their deserved state. Giving yourself a range to work with, a range that you cannot get darker than, than, jeez. <coughs> dark spot here, dark spot here. Tell yourself, this is the darkest spot on the face. How could anything be as dark as this without being a valley? If there is another valley, if she's got a scar or a big hole, then of course, by all means, show that cave. But you have to have the value first. Okay? That's the point of the dark spots. They are the darkest spots because they are the deepest spots or the crevices or the moments of, or the points of, of impact between two fatty substances or whatever of the face. Two fatty units, not substances. <laughs> okay, if you don't know how to draw a nose, go to the how to draw noses video. I'll explain every single little stroke here. And I have written a book for those who are curious, for those who want it sort of in written form. Everything that I've taught so far, stuff that isn't in the videos um, that you guys can take a look at comes with a brush set, it comes with a video on how to use the brushes. Um, there's also a preview video I'll, I'll show at the end of the stream if I have some time. Okay, and I'm just establishing these dark spots here. Remember the skin is a transparent substance. It will make everything look blended. It will blend all the colors to a degree together. The upper lid, uh, upper lip is darker than the bottom lip, but not so much that it looks like she's wearing darker lipstick on the top. The lips are a shade or two darker than everything surrounding, definitely. This is really, really low res, so when I zoom in, it just jumps straight in. So I'm just going to be trying to get... Okay, that's good. And now what I'm doing is I'm starting to find other shades and other shadows. So now I'm chiseling. I've determined my light source is coming from above, and now I'm chiseling. You had the basics there. Now you're going to be learning the uh, next step, the next step toward making it look realistic. This is by Julia, correct? Is Julia here? Yes? That's cute, Jewel Bird. Is that your nickname? Shadow of the Upper Island. I mean, like your real life nickname. Because <laughs> it sounds like Julia. Jewel. That's cute. Okay, Upper Eyelid. Get some light. Alright, just trying to find the shadows find the clusters of hairs that, that are causing shadows, giving out, not sparingly, but to everything that needs it, shadows to everything that needs it, making sure you're not overdoing the makeup. Be careful. 
be careful from depending on makeup in your drawings. And look at how much form we already have with the dark spots, Julia. Just with the dark spots, just with the shading and the chiseling. We haven't even brought in any serious highlights. Look at how much form we already have. And you can choose to stop here, you guys. That's the point. You choose to you can choose to stop here, but you have to know how to get to where you want to go if someone comes and demands a further step towards realism. If someone comes in and asks you to do our movie concept art for us, you know, we don't want anime. We want something that looks realistic. That's what your gallery is going to do. It's going to show them the, your range of, of skill. What can you do and what can you produce? Okay, so the, the, the jaw is a bit too chiseled. So I'm just going to soften that up a little bit. The, the the background is supposed to be lighter than the foreground, so now I'm going to have to make the foreground darker because I can't really make the background darker or lighter. So you're not supposed to do that. The first rule is um, Gary scale, of course, but you have to make sure that the background is a sh couple shades lighter. You don't have to make it lighter. I mean, there are moments when you're going to have a darker landscape, but if, it, if the landscape is darker, so is the character. It really just depends on the situation. Sometimes you'll have wallpaper that's darker color than the person. The light is exposing them. As you see, I'm having a lot of trouble here. <laughs> really, really low res. You can tell when Photoshop is like, cannot compute, cannot compute. Then get the chin, just with the shadows and what you already have. Okay. Try to send me not like massive pictures, but pictures, um, paintings that are a bit high in res, so I can show you the maximal sort of approach. And then I'm going to get the secondary light source and locate this jaw that has eluded us. But I'm very, very proud of every single one of you who's attempted this challenge. It is a very difficult challenge. It tests you as a person. It is. It tests your work habits. It reveals a lot of who you are to yourself. And it can be challenging to know that much about yourself that fast. You can be the type that gives up quickly and you no start noticing that about yourself. It is a difficult journey to, to, to become an artist, but it's even more difficult to become a different person entirely. I mean, you have to become a different person if you want to improve. Because you're going to have to change your work habits, your lifestyle, hence who you are entirely. Or not, not really who you are, I mean, you're still you, but we tend to, there tends to be a gray area when it comes to our work habits and our personalities. Be who you want to be, but don't be lazy. That's never a good thing to have in a personality. Fight for, you know, your dream to be a good artist. I'm just trying to sculpt the face without making her look too old or too skinny. Okay, and now I'm just going to go in and give the eyes a bit less of a sort of a glassy look. eyes look ghostly is a nice stylistic effect. Make sure you're not doing it accidentally. Make sure you are doing it intentionally. Okay, also talk about um, how to make eyes look more realistic. You know, the eye, the eye part of the eyes. And this is what I want you to do. I'm not going to go any further with this one, Julia, because I really want you to capture this and then jump on to your, maybe your day two or day three, I'll give you more and more tips and tricks to make it look more realistic, be more harsh with my critique. This is pretty much all I'll do. I'll introduce some light spots to you, so 
Remember that thing? Mil milk mustache merges with the, the cheekbone height here, like a little bit of a of a thing here. Cheekbone needs some light. Brow bones need some light on top of the brows. Do you see that realism just emerging? Now she looks like that girl from from Tron. <coughs> okay about the nose and the nose structure. Alright. She does look like she's wearing makeup, but again, I'll just leave you with this so that you can work with this and then give us more later on. So I'll just sharpen it so you can see the brush is a bit. <clears throat> so before I desaturated it, I rearranged stuff with the liquify. The eyes are just too big. I mean, you will get big eyes. Just you don't have to make them that big. It sort of looks alien-like. You know what I mean, Julia? You don't have to make them that big. And then after. Before sort of the realistic version of her before after it's a lot to take in but again I showed you the shadows come first then a little bit of light dark spots are the most important chisel it around the light source and you will you will get to where you want to be I promise some people like to stick here but some people this is all they want in their style and that's fine for them but again think about your style and how where it's gonna take you so I'm not sure if you guys added me on your Skype yet so I can send them back to you. A lot of people forgot to do that so that I, I couldn't send it back to them. But now on to this one. I think we're going to run out of time. I'm so sorry for not being able to reach the other peoples today. 14 Day Challengers sort of need the critique um, in order to move on. Okay, a lot of rules are broken in this. A lot of rules. Jimmy. This is Jimmy's, right? We've broken all the rules, Jimmy. Okay. <laughs> this is your day one. I'm going to be a little bit harsh. First and foremost rule is please paint in grayscale. Okay? That's number one. Write that down. Second number, second rule is the background cannot in any way, shape, or form be that black. You can make it a little bit darker than the face, but I suggest lighter because the face should have all the real values on it. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take that out goodbye find a nice medium gray tone and stick to it and don't leave it stick to it for the rest of your life get married to it have some kids okay do not at any point in time use black or white it's called gray scale okay Jimmy all right then next up um, I'm gonna lighten up the face a little bit by just decreasing the saturation or the visibility of the layer going to decrease the head. Remember, portraits are not close-ups. Portraits are a bust, meaning the neck has to be involved in the image some way, somehow. All right. All right, Jim Jim. <laughs> Why did I say that? The neck has to be part of it, as well as the shoulders. I think I drew that too long, but we'll see. <coughs> Bye, Penny. Thanks for coming. Okay. Next up is the skin tones. So you've chosen a, a certain tone for the skin. Let's just stick to that. And because this is your first day one, I believe, I am going to be really, really harsh with you. I'm going to make sure that you get all of the rules before you are invited to break them. Again, repetition makes perfection. I know I'm repeating myself a lot, but you guys will notice how effective a teaching method that is and a learning method at that as well. And yes, I repeat myself a lot, a lot, but it is very, very important. I, I, I have re received a lot of improvement photos and um, improvement stuff from a lot of students, I think solely because of the repetition in my teaching style. And I know it can get annoying, and I'm sorry for those who are already experienced in this, but for the new people, they need to hear it as much as need to hear it more than once. 
So I'm just trying to make sure everyone has equal opportunity of learning. Now I'm just going to darken the face just a touch because it seems to be a bit light for the background. Again, please try to send me larger uh, quality. All right, now for the liquify. The eyes are really well done. I wouldn't change the eyes. They're actually really pretty. You're getting a little bit too detailed with the eyes there without everything else getting detailed. Remember, work at the same detail level all around. The lips, however, are a touch too big. Once I decrease the size of the lips, they're a bit outside of that triangle I was talking about. Once I decrease the size of the lips, you'll notice that it will have a little bit less, a little bit more beauty, let's say. Try to make the nose look like normal functioning nose. Nostrils are symmetrical. There's that spot in between both nostrils and some artists just tend to make it too big. They make it too big because accidentally they don't realize they're making it big. Try your best not to accidentally do stuff. I mean, you can make mistakes, go right ahead. You have to make mistakes to learn. But don't accidentally be an artist for the rest of your life. Okay, so before, the lips were just a touch too big. It looks like she had one too many um, cosmetic surgeries on her lips. And that tends to be what it looks like. They take fat from your butt and put it in your lips, literally. Maybe it's a myth, I don't know. Next thing, I like how you did this eye. I don't like how you did this eye because I'm starting to note here. I'm starting to notice your anime phase sneaking back in. Like I said before, imagine anime is like a stress ball, and on that stress ball is written the word anime. Squeeze it every time <laughs> you're angry at yourself for being or not reaching your goal or whatever. Squeeze the anime out of you. Poop it out when you go to the washroom. <laughs> serious. It's, it's only going to cripple you as an artist. So what you're doing here was really good. You had the nice beautiful strokes. You had these beautiful values. Look, I look so realistic and nice and approachable. You do need brows, however. I mean, you can choose not to draw brows, but I want to know that you can draw brows before you choose not to. Okay? Remember, the shadow comes first. That's the rule for the 14 day challenge. Show me that you can do everything and then at the end of the 14 day challenge you can start breaking those rules, okay? That's the most important thing. Repetition, repetition, repetition. Know the rules before you break them. Okay, so I'm just introducing the shadow of the eyebrow first. And then the lower eyelids get shadows. Make sure that you don't draw eyes symbolically. Please, please, all of you, please go watch the How to Paint Eyes video. Because I talk about the science of it. I don't want you guys to draw eyes like this for the rest of your life. You know, the way you drew them in anime. Okay, I want you guys to draw the eyeball. And then the eyelids wrapped around. And then the eye. And then the pupil or the iris and the pupil. I want to, I want to know you're placing the light in as if there's, it's like a bowl and you're looking at the bottom of the bowl. I want you guys to think about the eyelids and the way they wrap and the way they um, fold. And I want you guys to draw this this crap here because it's gonna it's gonna really bother your improvement a lot. It's gonna it's gonna keep you behind the fence keep you in beginner phase and you don't want to be there and if you understand already the rules and you're not applying them then you're going to be there biting at your own skin and I know that sounds to totally over passionate I know it sounds a bit emo but us artists ease the emos because we, we, we're, we're really hard on ourselves we want to improve we want to get to where we want to go and we are we are our worst critics we will we will say it first I suck we will say it first If you want to get to that place, apply yourself. Apply. I don't even know what apply yourself means. I'm just using it because I learned it from that one show about drugs. 
<clears throat> and how cool they are. But it's just apply apply the right amount of, of effort. Learn how they act in real life. If you want to learn how to draw an Asian eye, I talk about that as well. If this was supposed to be an Asian eye. How can we enter the challenge? Yes, it's informal. You can just start right away. That's what I, how I, I try to keep this class very, very informal. I don't want people to think that they're enrolled in some sort of stupid academy that asks too much money. Just, you know, if you're ready, then you're ready and you get, you, you know, be your own teacher. Self-taught students are more versatile than students that depend on a school. That's what I've noticed. They're way more creative, way more humble in their creative process, not humble character-wise. I'm sure everyone's humble here. I'm just saying that the creative process is more humble. They're more willing to accept mistakes because they know out of personal experience they have to make the mistake first because they've taught themselves this entire time, meaning that they've critiqued themselves. They've, they've said over and over to their self in the mirror, you need to improve. I really appreciate that about artists that took the long way, the road less traveled by, as they say. Okay, so I'm just trying to introduce some forms, some realistic, organic patterns in light and shadow. Introduce everything I've taught already in the 14-day challenge and everything I've taught in those YouTube videos. I'll be reestablishing my dark spots soon. I'm just trying to sculpt. We had a real lack in, in value before. The values were just a touch too dark. I mean, too light. So yes, it looks dark now, but let me do this. And we're at a good place. And now that we have that base, just bring in your dark spots. Rule number one. Or rule number two or whatever. nostrils and you'll start noticing the dark spots are literally all you need. You need very minimal rendering to continue on creating the, the perfect face. <clears throat> yeah, we are posting those rules. <laughs> we will be. I promise. I did post it a long time ago and I uploaded it actually on one of the but I'm not that popular in DeviantArt so I don't think you guys would have seen it bottom lip as well, not to make it look like she has lipstick. Just trying to keep the values balanced. <clears throat> so yeah, it's only fair I'll post the rules again. It's not fair for me to keep blabbing on about the rules. Okay. I don't want to throw too much information on you. You've seen the other critiques already. Uh, Jimmy. Probably written a thing or two down. If you haven't, you should start writing notes down. Because if you write them down and they're on your sketchbook, if you write them anywhere else, you're an artist. You're not going to want to. The thing is about artists, they don't like reading rules. They really hate that the most. And so if you write it on your sketchbook, on the next page you're going to be drawing, it's a really, really good way to make yourself remember to do it. So I'm bringing in some light spots here. Bringing in the typical light spots that I talked about. Inner corner, outer corners. Chin, lip, Cupid's bow, and nose. <coughs> okay, really, really basic stuff. Now to save time, I'm just going to use the burn tool on shadows get all these values down. Yeah, the burn terminal is awesome for that. I'm 4% on one right now. So once you get everything on the same level, if you use the burn tool or the levels or whatever, you're going to start noticing that they'll still keep the same form, it's just a darker version because you've kept everything at this similar level. Don't use the burn tool to paint your image for you. I look very fake. Take it from me.
She looks like that sucker punch girl. <clears throat> there is a realistic version for every drawing you've ever drawn. There is a realistic version that still has the same beating heart of the artist in it. I know I'm, I'm using lines here, but to save time, you need to make sure that the neck... nicely match with the jaw and then paint over those lines. Do not keep them. Oh, I see. Wow. Did you hear? She does that when she's stretching. Okay. Again, watch how to paint nose, how to paint lips, how to paint eyes, and you'll know why I'm making all these choices. Explain them one by one. Okay, that's not the darkest spot of the nose, or the lightest spot. <clears throat> the nose is tricky. It has a really, really high point and a really, really low point. You have to know where those two start. Sometimes the nose starts off in between the eyes and even further than the eyes. So from the side it looks like this. And if it was real life, if it was from this point of, point of view, it would be like this. Where the nose, there's no dent in the nose. But for beauty's sake, you always have to have the dent. 